Um, so last week I bought an Amazon Echo because they were cheap-ish on sale. Um, started playing around with it and then while I was browsing through some of the Amazon Lambda documentation, I noticed that one of the uh, sample projects talked about building an Amazon or building functions for Echo using Lambda. So I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, and it, actually it turns out that it's not that difficult. So I wanted to walk you through how to do that. Um, so the first piece of it is there is a really good tutorial on developing an Alexa skill as a Lambda function. So essentially the apps that you add to Echo are called skills. Uh, and this, there's a great tutorial, walks you through all of the specific details in depth. Uh, but basically it consists of going to Amazon Web Services, sign in. Let's see. Click on Lambda. Uh, you have to use the North Virginia um, data center. That's the only one that will work with it. Uh, hit Create a Lambda function. And then they have these blueprints in here. So it's actually on the second page. Amazon Skills Color Experts. So this will get you going. You just have to fill out all the different um, parameters. You know, give it an ID. Uh, let's just do it here real quick. Test. Uh, it's a Lexus skills kit, so you have to pick that one as the event source. Give it a name, test. Um, we're going to use node. Uh, this is the sample code. We'll edit it here in just a second. Um, just use the basic execution role. Um, just hit allow there. All right. And I give it a few more seconds so that it doesn't time out on me. Hit next, hit create function. Okay, so that's how you would quickly set up the Lambda function side of things. Um, so you can see we've got event source is the Alexa skills kit, so on and so forth. All right, I've already built this, so I'm just going to delete that test that we just created and we're gonna walk through the code that I wrote um, here in a couple of hours. <clears throat> so I've been trying to teach my son JavaScript and I think it helps when you teach someone a new skill if they can easily see the benefits. So uh, the web provides a pretty immediate reward. I, <clears throat> I write some HTML, some CSS, some JavaScript. I refresh the page, I can see what's going on. Uh, with all of these new devices, it's actually really cool what you can do because now we can write a little bit of code and then I can talk to this new device in my house and it will do stuff that I told it to do. Uh, in this case, we needed an idea, so um, NASA has, let's see, NASA has an open API. So I thought it'd be cool if we could interact with that API. Let's see, here we go. So I have this Near Earth Objects API. So the idea is that I can say, Alexa, are we all going to die today? Hmm. I can't find the answer to the question I heard. Okay. So if you just ask Alexa the question, it can't find it. But if I say, Alexa, ask Spaceball if we're all going to die today. Alexa, ask Spaceball if we're all going to die today. Dear me, there are two objects near the Earth. 2000 WP19 is between 80 and 179 meters in size, moving at 37,543 kilometers per hour and will miss the Earth by 8,773,350 kilometers. It poses no threat, but you really should get some exercise 279816. 2000 JE5. Alexa, stop. Is so um, it's actually not that hard to interact with the Alexa API. It does all of the natural language processing for you. Uh, the di one, it's not really a disadvantage, but you do have to address the skill specifically. So you notice the first time, if I just ask Alexa the question, she doesn't know. But if I ask um, using the skill name, in this case, Spaceball, then it knows to, to route the request to my specific Lambda function. Okay, so let's go look at the code. Uh, here it is. Um, now you can edit it, and in fact, we edited it in line for the most part, but I'm gonna show it in Sublime just because it's a little bit easier to see over here in Sublime. So um, 
I could put a deploy process in place, but this was just a quick hack, so I didn't want to have to deal with setting all that up. Uh, here's the function. I have to require the HTTPS library because you have to use SSL to talk to the NASA API. Uh, this is all boilerplate, this first section. You'll notice that here's the common pieces of a Lambda function with the exports handler. You receive an event and a context. That's the exact same whether you're writing um, a Lambda function to work with, with Alexa or whether you're using a Lambda function um, you know, to work with the API gateway. The signature is always the same. You receive an event and you receive some context. Turn off Alexa there. Um, okay, so the first thing we do is we just check to see if we have an application ID. Uh, you get this when you set up your application on the Echo side of things. Um, and then you get different kinds of requests. So one is a launch request. Uh, another is an intent request and then there's a session end request. So a launch request um, I believe that routes, let me remember, um, I believe that just is when the, it's kind of like an initialization, so you can set up uh, a session if you need that. In our case, we didn't need that. Um, probably focus here on the intent request piece of it. Uh, let's see. Actually, on the launch request, if you ask it a question without giving it the parameters that it's looking for, then it's going to hit this on launch and it'll give you a welcome response, which is kind of like some help test text for you know knowing how to interact with the, the device. And in this case, here's this get welcome response. It goes down to this function right here. It says welcome to Spaceball, um, and it says you can ask me, are we all going to die? Um, all right. So you get that without really doing anything. Uh, the intent requests are the interesting pieces. So on intent meaning the Echo device was able to find something in what the user said that maps to an intent, and then we can check for that. So in this case, uh, it finds Spaceball. So you notice when I specifically said, Alexa, ask Spaceball, then it says, oh, that's the intent. It matches the intent name. Um, then we can run this specific function right here. So the function is to check for near Earth objects. Uh, we get the intent, the session, the callback. In our case, the only thing I cared about was the intent because the date comes through as part of the intent, and I'll show you how in just a second. So we parse out that date. Uh, then we make a call to NASA with this Git Neo right here. Um, this is their API right here. You have to give it a start date and an end date. In our case, I just give it the current day, unless the user asks for a different day. Um, and then, based on what you get back from NASA, you can look for all these near-Earth objects. Uh, this is kind of old school with the four loops, but I didn't want to have to deal with importing libraries and uploading codes, so uh, we're just writing old school uh, Node 10 compatible JavaScript here. Uh, added these round functions because otherwise it will give it out to like 10 decimal points and then the Echo device will read 10 decimal points, and it's hard enough to understand it when it's reading you know, millions of miles. Okay, so really a lot of the work here is in setting it up. That's our function. It's pretty easy to test. Uh, if I just click on test, it will send whatever is in my test event to this Lambda function, and then I'll get some output right here that says, here's the plain text that you're supposed to send back. Here's the output speech you're supposed to send back to the device, and that's what it'll read to you. Okay. Um, the next piece of this is actually just configuring it inside of the Alexa developer console, which is what I've done here. So you have to go to developer.amazon.com. Uh, you click on this Alexa link right here. It might make me log in again. Um, click to get started with the Alexa skills kit. You can see I've already set this up, but you can just click over here to add a new skill. Um, click edit on this. So here's the interaction model, and this is how it parses out what the user is saying. So the intent is Spaceball, and I've given it a slot for a date, meaning um, this sample utterance down here tells it where date's going to come from. So you can say, ask Spaceball if there are asteroids close by today, or tomorrow, or next week. 
and it'll figure out what the date is using natural language processing. And then that date gets passed to your Lambda function, which if you remember back here in this code, down here, here's how we get the date intent.slots.date. So slots are the bits and pieces that it's supposed to find from the user's um, language. Uh, in this case, we want date, and you have to get value. Uh, and then we turn that into a date. And then if this is null, if they don't pass us anything, we just default to right now. Uh, you can add as many slots as you want. Amazon has default types like date and time. Um, you can add custom types, and if you add custom types, then you have to define the custom slot types. Uh, then you give it a whole bunch of sample text to say, you know, tell me if I'm in danger, tell me what's out there, so on and so forth. Uh, the rest of this is just add a description and add publishing information because you can push this out to the Amazon Alexa. Um, it's not really a store, it's just underneath the skills. So in this case, if you, yeah, this is the Alexa web interface. Because I've signed into the Alexa, well, I've configured my Echo device with the same account that I used to develop the Lambda function, this automatically shows up. So when, if you write one of these things, you have to use the same account if you want to actually use an Echo device to do the, the testing. So I've got the code. Let's see. I, I kept these around. So here's like the intent request. Um, Here's the uh, response back from NASA so that I can test with that. And then here's a list of sample utterances so that um, that's easy to copy and paste. So I've, I've got this out on GitHub. I'll link to it in the, the video notes. Any questions? Okay.